Welcome back. Uh, you got Julian Warren here. And as a reminder, we are traveling the world with our two dogs. We are currently in Sicily, but we are going to talk Ecuador today. And we have a good friend with us that uh, runs Cuenca Expat Magazine out of uh, Cuenca, Ecuador, who's going to be joining us today. And as a reminder, if you haven't been with us since the very beginning, Julie and I, we spent nine months in Cuenca, Ecuador uh, during the start of COVID. We ended up making so many good friends there. We really enjoyed the Cuenca, Ecuador community. Um, the expat community there was fantastic. The food was great. The cost of living was fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> and, and, and it was safe. It was so safe. Yeah. Um, we really enjoyed it there. And we have many friends that are there and we've done many expat videos and interviews. We encourage you to check those out. But, you know, there's been some things going on in Ecuador that uh, we felt we should maybe jump on and give an update because we do get messages and questions about, hey, there's safety concerns in Ecuador. Things have changed. And we wanted to get with Ed since he's got his finger on the pulse of what's going on in Ecuador. And uh, has a you know is well known in the expat community there and again magazine is Cuenca expat magazine and I encourage you to check it out and if you're in Cuenca you know seek out those magazines and so at this point I'd like to welcome you uh, Ed hello hey hello from Cuenca hey good to see you again yeah, it's a beautiful day here. Uh, I don't know what it is in Sicily, but here it's uh, 72 and, uh, you know, it's just a beautiful afternoon. Cuenca, uh, as you know, uh, Carnival is celebrated in uh, in South America a lot. And uh, Cuenca is right in the middle of uh, Carnival celebration right now. That must be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. You know, a lot of activity, a lot of uh, people come in as uh, tourists. Um, you know, the hotels are usually totally booked and uh, I, I assume that they'll have another good year. That's that's fantastic. You know, unfortunately, when we were in Ecuador, so many things were not happening because of COVID. So we didn't get to see some of the great festivals, even though we were there during the right time for them. Um, yeah. You know, so so there was parts of parts of that experience. We unfortunately have a, a gap in just because of the time period yeah. we were there. But we We've heard great things, great and wonderful things about the this time of uh, of this time to be in Ecuador, being in Cuenca. And you know, a little geography for those of you not familiar with Ecuador, Cuenca is in the is up in the Andes Mountains. So you can basically dial up your year round temperature based on the altitude. Um, if you're down on the coast, it's going to be really really hot. It's on the equator, and the higher you go, the cooler things get. So if you want really really um, hot weather, you're down on the coast. If you are looking for a more of a dry desert climate, you have Vilcabamba, I think around 4,000 feet high or so. And then if you get to Cuenca, you get like year round spring at uh, 8,500 8, feet in elevation. If I'm we're not we're around 8,000 8, uh, feet up. Uh, yeah. I used to have a, a cottage in Colorado that was 8,000 and there we had snow and it was cold and things like this. Uh, we're actually high in the Andes, but we're in a valley. So for whatever reason, uh, we have almost, you know, the same temperature year around. You know, it varies a little bit, but never gets too cold. I've only worn a jacket. Now, I'm warmer than most, but, uh, you know, I wore a jacket maybe two or three times in 10 years. I you know, love so, that weather. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I run around, you know, everybody else is running around on long sleeve shirts, but I'll run around on short sleeve shirts. But it's that kind of nice, like today, I, I, I think I mentioned, you know, it's 70, 62 degrees. And uh, when you're this high in altitude, you know, that can also be warm, you know, so it's, it's not a, you know, it's almost like, um, in a sense, it's almost like San Francisco without the fog or the wind. You know, yeah. it reminds me of that kind of temperature. You yeah. know, at night you'll put on a, you know, you'll put on a sweater or something like that. You know, you know, uh, Cuenca is the third largest city uh, in uh, uh, in Ecuador after Guayaquil, which is the big port city, in Quito, which is the capital, and Cuenca. And until probably. The 1960s, 
it was pretty isolated here because they didn't have the roads opening it up. So the, uh, you know, the roads uh, were, uh, you know, were treacherous and, and not very good from Guayaquil, you know, connecting the other areas of, of, uh, of Cuenca. So in a sense, you know, it's, it's, it has been a little bit like a time capsule and that uh, the United Nations has recognized that, as you may recall, the, you know, uh, it's, yes, a, it's a protected city because of uh, a lot of the colonial architecture, you know, that they have in the uh, you know, center. The Inca too. Yeah, they have Inca ruins around. The Incas had two capitals. The northern capital was actually Cuenca. And then uh, right before the Spanish came, there was a civil war between two brothers. And the brother that uh, was in the northern capital lost. And so the Incas came and uh, destroyed the city. So when the Spanish came, there wasn't much left of, uh, uh, you know, of the Inca architecture. You know, wow. so it's sort of interesting what, what happened. But, uh, you know, for the most part, people come here. They, uh, uh, you know, both tourists, it's the number, I think it's the third largest tourist attraction in Ecuador. I think uh, Galop, you know, Quito and then Galapagos and then Cuenca. So you have a lot of tourists. You see uh, a lot of European tourists, uh, you know, around. Well, well and, the expat uh, community there is very large. Now, there's, I think, 20,000 expats living in um, Ecuador at any given time, but over half of those are in Cuenca, correct? That's correct. Now, when we're talking about expats uh, from our definition, you know, uh, in this conversation and with our magazine, Quick Expats Magazine, we're really talking about uh, native English speakers mm -hmm. uh, because uh, obviously the largest expat communities in Ecuador are Peruvians and Colombians and Venezuelans now. Mm -hmm. But the uh, expats, maybe about, uh, I've been here 10 years, maybe about 15 years ago, uh, articles began to be written uh, about Ecuador you know, most uh, U.S. people, you know, my friends, they weren't quite sure where I was coming to. You know, they, yeah. they thought I was in next to Panama or something. You know, that, you know, the geography of a lot of Americans aren't very good, you know, deep south. But, uh, you know, Ecuador is a little country, uh, you know, that's bordered by Peru and uh, Colombia. Well, and uh, well, with the yeah. expat community there, Ed. With um, that many mostly retirees, uh, you know, probably two thirds of yes. them are, are retirees. Um, they're That's feeding all. that economy of six hundred thousand people quite a bit of financial income that comes in on an annual basis, and and I think that has really raised the quality of life and standard of living there in Cuenca overall. It's one of the has one of the highest quality of life in in the uh, country. Correct me if that's changed. Um, is is that still the case? Well, the expat community does contribute uh, both uh, financially. Our estimates are like $360 million are brought into the economy uh, each year by expats. I think that's maybe on the low side. Now, that isn't tourists or anything. That's just that's the expats know, living there. And as you pointed out, you know, most are retired. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, here among you know, we have to estimate the number because there's no uh, government source saying exactly what this, you know, there's no census of expats, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, over the years, we've triangulated, you know, the data that we can collect and talk to everybody that we can in the government. And, you know, we think there's somewhere, you know, maybe eight to 10,000, you know, we use the term 10,000 and most people expect mm -hmm. that, you know, use that same number. Uh, but they, uh, you have to, um, to have a visa here, as you may recall, you know, a permanent visa, you have to have uh, X number of dollars of income. And that's, you know, uh, $1,200, I think a person plus a dependent has to be 500. So you have a minimum, uh, dollar amount that expats have to have if they're living here. And the survey that we did with the mayor's office among the expats, it's the only one that's been done, and it was funded by the United Nations, and we helped out on that. Uh, it showed that uh, the average expat, 75% of the expats were married or living with a significant other. Uh, the average age was near 70. 
which makes sense because you retire around 65, 66. And usually a person, you know, thinks about, you know, for a year or so before, you know, relocating overseas. But the medical so, there is also a big draw because there's some really good hospitals and medical facilities. Yeah, in, the, the in private the medical facility, the uh, public medical facility of which, in, you know, in the United States, unless you're in the military, you know, there's no public health service. Uh, here, there's public health service that uh, they've been having trouble with, but the private, which most expats use either through insurance or out of pocket, uh, is fantastic. Uh, there's a, I can't quote you the source, but I just saw the other day that, you know, Cuenca was number eight in the world, you know, in terms of cities with, you know, overseas cities with good medical help. I mean, you have uh, one of our clients will be in the magazine next month is a, a big uh, cardio center. You know, there's eight cardio doctors there and they can do open heart, heart surgery and everything. So a person coming here doesn't really uh, have to worry about uh, medical in Cuenca. Now, if you're in a small town on the coast, then that's more of a problem. Uh, I actually here, had a, uh, um, on our Facebook group, if you're on Facebook, you go to Warren Julie Travel and you'll find us. I had posted probably about a year ago a survey about some of the uh, the best overseas medical options and, and locations, and you know Ecuador yeah. was on that list. Cuenca was it was a surprise, and so I you know I could say that uh, we had a friend that had to have some uh, a serious situation taken care of that was uh, dealing with cancer, had to have it removed, had to have a surgery, and they were treated. Uh, very right. well yeah very well. everything went perfect and they have nothing but glowing reviews for uh what happened and under their bad situation it was in they were in very good hands and so yeah, it's, well somebody i know that had uh, open heart surgery last week you know and uh it's nothing but you know positive reviews from you know the medical staff and the hospital staff where he stayed and so uh, it has a lot going for it. Uh, we did a, uh, we've done some articles and uh, there was one, I'll send you the link uh, that was in the uh, uh, Quinca newspaper here about the uh, expat community and uh, what they're contributing. But in addition to, uh, there are very few that work. You know, I work, there's probably of the eight to 10,000 here. You know, I, I don't think there's more than 20 of us that work. I think there's a few expats that own bars or some restaurants. Yeah, you know, some small things, things like that. Economy. You know, I know somebody that was a venture capitalist in the U.S. and has uh, launched a um, exporting coffee, you know, which could turn out to be a big company. And that's helping uh, to support the economy there also. Yeah, yeah, because some of the best coffee in the world comes out of Ecuador. Yep. And this is uh, the coffee around Loja, which is south of here. You know, but for the most part, uh, you're correct. You know, uh, this is a retirement area. Uh, people come to uh, retire. Uh, a couple can live comfortably on uh, about nineteen hundred uh, dollars uh, a month. You know, that's well, not eating average, out. Well, the average night. American on Social Security is getting nineteen hundred a month, and a couple's getting twenty nine hundred. So, if you're saying a couple can live there on nineteen hundred, yeah. One thing, Julie and I, we retired early to travel because we are uh, financially self-sufficient. You don't have to be at retirement age to live in Ecuador. If you have the ability to support yourself, um, there's different ways for a residency. We'll actually talk to our residency attorney here soon again and do a revisit with her from our video from almost four years ago and, and get the new updates. So look for that. But Ed, the reason I wanted to bring you here, because we know Ecuador is a Shangri-La for retirees. There's so many great things about living in Ecuador between the climate, the cost of living, um, you know, the, the safety, the medical. But, you know, I think one of the pillars of going there has been shaken, and especially in the news, whether you're looking at USA Today, whether you're looking at Reuters, Al Jazeera, the AP, MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, if you look up articles within the last month to three months, it's got nothing but, you know, crime and assassinations, TV stations being taken over by gangs, prison riots, and we're, 
wondering what is going on as far as with the expat community and do you see this on the streets what is what what is the current situation um in ecuador are people still coming or are people leaving what's what, yeah. what can you tell us well let me talk let me talk to the uh, violence uh ecuador is between uh two uh major uh you know cocaine producers peru and and colombia uh, they don't produce any or much uh, cocaine here at all. The reason that uh, what's happened to Ecuador over the last probably 20 years or so, as the uh, U.S. and the Colombian government tap down on, on the drug cartels, you know, they're going to go to places of the least resistance. And so Ecuador, for example, is the largest exporter of bananas. Uh, you know, uh, much to the U.S. and, and much to uh, to Europe. And uh, so what they were doing is the drug cartels were using uh, Ecuador's ports and uh, coastal areas uh, to become a um, to become a transient for drugs to North America and Europe. And so when that happens, then you had always crime, you know, around ports and things as we do in the U.S., but you had an increase of, uh, you know, cartel associated. There are gangs, but they're cartel associated, uh, you know, uh, increasing here. And a recent uh, a move by the new attorney general, they uh, did a, uh, uh, they uncovered uh, serious corruption in the judicial as well as the police and army units that have been going on for some time. Uh, and so they, the new president uh, came in, and he's a young guy. Uh, uh, he doesn't look, you know, he's older than 20 that he looks, but, you know, he's still, you know, I guess in his 30s. And uh, he uh, wanted to make a move to, uh, to clean this up. And as a reaction, uh, the drug uh, gangs got together and they rioted in the prisons, and the prisons were mostly controlled by the drug gangs uh, with the help of the prison officials. And uh, they uh, uh, they sent a small, you know, amateur crew to the TV station and, you know, tried to shoot up, you know, do a couple of bombs. And, you know, it was never as bad as it was in Colombia during the heyday of Pablo. But it... Uh, you know, it really uh, upset the people here because they weren't used to this kind of open violence. And uh, the uh, president uh, was very shrewd, I believe. Uh, I think they were counting on the fact that he was young and new, but instead he labeled uh, the drug gangs terrorist organizations, which allowed him under the constitution to use the army and the national police in a way that had never been done before. And so this is, uh, he put on a 90-day curfew. Uh, this is the second month in the curfew. And the all the statistics show that the uh, homicide rate is down by 90% in the worst cities. And, uh, you know, they've been cleaning up the uh, prisons, you know, trying to get a, rid of the corrupt officials and moving the most violent to more secure. And so they're they're really making moves and he has the support of the Ecuadorian population. I think that, you know, his approval rating is, I thought I saw 83 or 85%, mm -hmm. you know, which, uh, which is great for any politician, uh, you know, because of all the, as you remember, all the, the splinter political parties they have here, you know, they don't, they're not a two party system. They're a hundred party system or something. At you know? this point in time, do you, do you personally feel safe in Cuenca? As yeah, I feel did? safe. Uh, there were a lot of uh, rumors going around and uh, there was a panic, uh, uh, you know, caused by social media in Cuenca that there were prisoners breaking out. They were on the streets, you know, car bombings, people getting shot. They investigated that nothing happened. <laughs> you know, it was completely safe. Now, in some of the areas of the country, you know, on the coast, you know, you did have problems. Uh, you know, when the, uh, you know, the, you know, the gangs were battling the police and the military. But since the military has come in, uh, 
I think the gangs have either they've arrested, I don't know, maybe up to 2000 gang members, uh, you know, many of the leaders. Uh, so, you know, they now if they keep that up, that'll be great. You know, but what what what's going to happen in 60, 90 days, you know, but as long as they keep pressure on the drug people, the uh, the most uh the most violent city outside of Guayaquil, it's a uh, transportation place called Duran. Uh, they were having like 28 murders a week or something like that, you know, and uh, it's down to one now. Wow. And uh, so they're really making uh, contributions. So I think that the, you know, I'm, you know, we have to, we're not involved in the politics at, at all, you know, and mm -hmm. uh can you speak also to the um, areas, and I don't know if this is within your wheelhouse of knowledge, but, um, you know, a couple other very popular places uh, beyond Cuenca, Ecuador, in, um, in the country of Ecuador is uh, Cotacachi over that's uh, outside of Quito, um, mm -hmm. probably about an hour. And then you have Vilcabamba, which is probably about an hour outside of Loja that um, are have sizable expat communities. Um, do you know if those areas are being impacted with this? Uh... Yeah, I, I've talked to people that I know in uh, in Quito, and most of the expats live in the valleys, you know, Kumbaya, Cotacachi, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And they haven't had a problem. I mean, you know, there's military on the streets in Quito. You know, it's the capital. You know, so there's a military presence. But uh, I don't think any of the expats have been affected. You know, our statistics show that you know, 50% of the expats, these are round numbers, you know, live in Cuenca, 25% maybe around Quito and another 25% on the coast, but they're not in Guayaquil, they're in Salinas on up to uh, Manta, the largest group being Manta. Uh, but these groups, uh, Ilacaba, south of Loja, you know, that's talked a lot, but I mean, there's, le there's less than 500 expats there mm -hmm. you know and uh, as far as i know nice little hippie community we, yeah well we, it's, we enjoyed it's, visiting yeah it's it's expanded and it's a pretty area uh and a lot of europeans have, have actually migrated there uh but the uh you know the reports are are similar you know i've called friends in manta they had a couple of months ago they had their mayor assassinated but now they you know, believe that it was drug related. A uh, presidential candidate got assassinated, but he was, uh, you know, an, on an anti drug uh, platform. And so they have since uh, arrested uh, a group and, you know, through whatever manipulation, they were all, all those shooters were put in the same prison and they were all killed, you know, so they couldn't really identify who was involved. You know, the FBI has come down to help them. And, you know, they're still unraveling who was really behind it. You know, they, they're convinced it was a Colombian drug cartel, you know. Are you but, seeing uh, many people uh, deciding not to come anymore, visas ending, things like that? Yeah, well, I had that same question a month ago or whenever this started. And uh, I, my friend, uh, Maite Durant of Gringo Visas, she does the most permanent visas for expats and uh she reported she had a you know of all the visa work in the works she had a couple that were going to postpone their trip here and i called uh, a friend of mine in manta who runs the largest uh, uh, uh expat real estate sales to expat real real estate sales to expats and uh he reported that you know, I think he had one cancellation of a trip coming down, but uh, still people are coming. There's been a lot of, uh, as you would imagine, uh, you know, the, some of the reports have been untrue on social media, especially social media. But some of the national news organizations, you know, they'll take, you know, one incident and, uh, you know, their job is to sensationalize things. And uh, yes, those murders did happen or that car bombing did happen or, you know, but if you put it, what I always tell my friends, you know, in the U.S., if you put it in context, you know, there's more violence in in Chicago last weekend, you know, than there is in Ecuador, you know. You know, I, so, I think the news likes to take that one house that's on fire in a yeah, city and make it look like the whole city's on fire. Of um, course, 
you know. Yeah, we we're running around Europe and and you know, we we run around the Balkans through we have a home in Montenegro that we use as a home base and we run through Serbia. We've been over to Turkey recently. We're running all all around these countries, Bosnia, we've been through Kosovo, we've been uh through Albania yeah. and and you know, we have people saying, you know, that's dangerous or and and, and I will tell you what, my eyes have been so opened up as I've as we've been traveling. I love Serbia. I love yeah. Turkey. These are two of my favorite countries to go to. Yeah, and I know. But if you look on the news, you know, you know but, yeah, uh, the news and you movies. Go to, thinking, yeah. Wow, this is crazy. Yeah. Well, that's the way it here. I mean, you know, if you read as I did, you know, I, I try to keep it abreast of what the news organizations are talking about. Uh, you know, and uh, but you know, I think it was uh, you know typical what the media does you know they have to sensationalize to get the viewers you know basically that's their business and uh you know i mean if you you know if you saw any of those reports you'd think there were bodies and street battles going on you know i mean i went through duran going to Wyakill a couple of weeks you know a month ago you know and uh, i wasn't shot up or worried about it i mean there are some parts i mean i i moved here from galveston which is an island south of houston a beautiful place, but there were some parts of Galveston that I wouldn't go into at night. Yeah. You know, uh, well, San Diego, and, where I grew up, there's parts of San Diego you don't go into, but it's still a beautiful place to go visit. Yeah, yeah. and so every places. city, every city has that. Uh, you know, Cuenca. You know, I'm not sure where they are at, but I, you know, you know, in certain areas, you know, you hear, you know, that there's drug dealing and prostitution and things. You know, prostitution is legal here, but not legal on the street corners and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, but I mean, for the most part, you don't see any of that. And and I don't think, like I say, I don't know of any uh, expat that's been targeted. Um, you know, there was somebody, I think maybe when you were here, uh, there was, uh, you know, a homicide of an expat. And later on, it became that he was involved in some kind of drug deal with a boyfriend or you know i don't know what it was but you know i mean it, it you know you have to go sort of far out now they have petty crime as you do all through well all through the united states now unfortunately but all through uh, you know latin america and so you know you always have to not leave your cell phone around or you know you have to be careful of your environment but uh last night i went down to a, a place in el centro to see the Super Bowl, and because it was carnival, I couldn't get a, you know, I couldn't get a, uh, an easy taxi downtown. So I walked down to one of the main streets and, you know, I wasn't bothered by anybody. I didn't feel unsafe, you know, you know, and picked up a taxi there and, and came back. So I, uh, for the most part, uh, USA Today, I'll send you the link, did a really they I'll put it in my Facebook group. If anybody's watching this video and you want to see the article, you can go to uh, Warren Julie Travel on Facebook groups, and and I'll I'll put the article in there. Yeah, I'll send you the link because it was uh, balanced. But what what he did is he interviewed uh, four or five expats in Cuenca because they had the same thing. Here was Cuenca with a large expat population. Were they panicking? You know, were they getting ready to leave? And he found that. You know, people were aware of what was going on, but nobody's changing any plans, you know. Yeah. And so uh, it's sort of like uh, today, uh, as, uh, Carnival is uh, Tuesday, Fat Tuesday tomorrow. And Carnival's been going on since Friday, the celebrations and the concerts. And, you know, I checked the paper this morning and there hasn't been any report of, you know, any kind of violence or any anything like that, you know. Now, I don't know whether they they may have canceled some of the big events in Wyakill or something like that. I don't I don't I'm not sure of. But, uh, you know, so I, I think that uh, this is still one of the best places in the world. You know, if you're going to go retire and, and uh, relocate overseas, I think uh, it has a lot going for it, especially Cuenca. Uh, you might have appreciated the temperature because I was thinking uh, sometimes. The temperature here in Cuenca reminds me of San Diego a little bit. Yeah, it, yeah, especially in the um, you know springtime. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah you, you don't ever get to those summer temperatures. And, no, no, you don't get the hot <laughs> San Diego. 
but you get the uh, you know you get the evening, which is cool, and you might have to have a sweater on or yeah. And you know, on a rare occasion, you might get to the upper seventies in Cuenca, but normally yeah. you're looking at uh, somewhere in the sixties to low seventies. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. when it gets when it gets seventy, which it did last week, it was seventy four. Uh, it is. Uh, I mean, it doesn't feel like it. You know, I lived on the Gulf Coast, so I know what humidity <laughs> and heat is like. You know, out of Houston, but uh, it was very hot because you're so high. So you get the sun going at seventy four degrees, and it is really warm. Yeah. But uh, one of the things that uh, you may recall about Cuenca is the temperature is so mild that uh, people don't have heating and, and air conditioning. No, no, no heating, no air conditioning. But yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and start to wrap this up because our, okay, our, our record time is going to be running out here. But I do want to thank you so much for coming. So, you know, as a reminder, everybody, Julie and I, we have a great uh, video library of our experiences in Ecuador. So please go check out our playlist on that. We've got expat interviews in there as well. And, you know, Cuenca is still apparently a viable option if you're looking to uh, retire overseas, but we're also exploring other countries. So check out where, we, where we're going, where we've been. Um, so as a reminder, Julie and I, we're traveling full time with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in other countries, other places. We're trying to share experiences and our expenses with you. And we hope you're going to join us in the future. And until next time, have a great day, everybody. Ciao. Bye-bye. Goodbye now.